Okay, so I just wanted to connect the dots here between the surface area element we developed a couple clips back and the Jacobian that we saw back when we um, were talking about polar, co uh, polar coordinates. And so you should recognize this, this material that I've got up here from a couple slides ago. Um, except I've made a critical change. I changed R into Sigma. I already tried recording this video a couple times using R and it's just so god awfully confusing when you're trying to talk about polar coordinates and a parameterization. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't bear it. So I'm going with Sigma. This is lowercase Sigma. It's the Greek letter S. I know you probably think it looks like a diseased number six that fell on its side and is suffering, but just forget about it. Just we're, we're going to go with this because I can't take the R anymore. All right. So, okay, so we've got a parameterization of some domains. We've got a parameterization domain and we're like sending this out to, to make some surface here out in, in R3. Um, <clears throat> and then we talked about how its area element comes from looking at the infinitesimal tangent plane attached to a little point. So it's spanned by the partial derivatives of the parameterization in the directions that you're interested in. And, and the area of that little tangent plane you get by using this sort of magic cross product formula, right? Okay, okay. So now imagine what would happen if we did not use a, a big fancy um, parameterization of a surface like that, but imagine we were parameterizing a surface that just laid flat in the x, y plane. So instead, we'll go this way and we'll just map it to uh, say we're using the polar coordinate transform. So uh, I'll pretend that uh, this is R and this is theta. And we'll use um, polar. Uh, so we're going to take z equal to 0 to embed it into the, the, the xy plane. Then this region would probably look something like, uh, let's say, this. Like that. So... Um, each of those vertical lines is going to become a line of constant radius. So it's going to get warped into something like this. And then each of the horizontal lines is going to be a line of constant theta. So it's going to be uh, these, these radial lines stretching outward, passing through the origin like that. Okay. Now you can imagine, and, and this is going to be in our, our XY space. So if we were going to set up an integral over this uh, region that I've just sketched here, then uh, we might also think about it how it as how it sits in um, R three. So let me just uh, spin it around here. So here's x and here's y and here's uh, where the values of our integrand would be. And the domain that we're interested in is this one that goes um, around. Whoop. And so. I'm trying to draw this as if it's like embedded into the XY plane here. Just grant me some mercy. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so there's how it is, right? Okay. So now what this means is that we're doing um, sigma of, of R theta is equal to R cosine theta R sine theta and then zero because we're embedding it into the plane z equals zero. Now if you look at what that means over here in our setup for this guy, uh, the partials of z are going to both be equal to zero. So replace those with zeros. And then um, <clears throat> let's work out what we get here. So and also this is going to be r and uh, sorry r and r theta and theta. There we go. Um, <clears throat> for this for particular example of, of polar. So when we compute the first entry of the cross product here, the one corresponding to i, that's going to be the subdeterminant of these two. So we're going to be multiplying uh, partial y times 0 and then subtracting partial y times 0. Both of those are zeros. Everything zeroes out. We get 0. Then we go to find the second coordinate corresponding to the j here. So we're going to have to multiply partial x times 0 and partial x times 0 and subtract those and everything's a 0 and so we get a 0. And then for the last term, we're going to have this subdeterminant right here. So it's going to be this product minus this product. And this, this is exactly the Jacobian. So this guy here, xr 
uh, oops, y r x theta y theta. <coughs> um, this one here is the Jacobian. And you might be saying, hey, no, I, I switched the diagonal entries. Well, it turns out if you do that, the value does not change. So in other words, if, if, you, um, yeah, if you take the value of the determinant or what's called the transpose of the determinant, meaning, meaning you interchange the off-diagonal entries, you get the same thing. So um, if we look at the magnitude of uh, this guy right here, we're going to have um, the square root of 0 squared plus 0 squared plus this thing squared. And so that's just going to give us exactly the absolute value of the determinant. I know this is terrible. Um, x r, y r, x theta, y theta. And like I just said, that's the same thing as x r, x theta, y r, y theta. So flipping the matrix inside does not affect the value of the determinant. Um, and so that's it. So I just wanted you to see that this is kind of like the grand master formula. And the surface area element is one special case that you get when the parameterization of x and y is really, really simple. And then the Jacobian that you get for polar is another special case where you're just um, not uh, you have a you have a z coordinate of zero, so you're not making it bendy. You're just keeping it in the x y plane.